From the Double Tree by Hilton Hotel in, Alexand in uh, Arlington, Virginia, this is a special Barcelona Beltway weigh-in report from the Jared Hurd Julian Williams weigh-in that took place just a few moments ago here at Double Tree by Hilton in, in Arlington, Virginia. I'm Gary Digital Williams alongside Juan Marshall, and uh, there's a lot of excitement in the air for this one as we get ready to just hours away now from Hurd Williams. Yeah, this, this whole card looks like uh, every fighter is ready to fight. You know, got a out of the out of the state guys coming in. You know, in this area to fight out some of our local guys, and it looks like they they want to come in for some wins. Yep, no and, question. But, yep. No question. And also with Julian Williams, he, he looked a straight face, serious business. Looks like what Jerry heard is has, has the bubbly uh, bubbly personality, and, and he ex expressed it right here. And he's looked like he's ready also. Yep. Now we will post the weights on both our blogs, boxing on the Beltway, and for him fight talk. But we do want to tell you that Julian Williams did have a little difficulty making the 154-pound weight. He came in, his first weight was 154.2. Yep. He had to strip down, and then he got in at 153.8. Mm -hmm. Hurd came in also at 153.8. So uh, Hurd looks like he's focused despite all the misgivings we had concerning the uh, all the uh, media coverage he did and all the things he, he has done so well to promote this fight. Um, looks like he's ready to go on uh, Saturday. Yeah, if, if he wins this uh, fight uh, with outstanding results, mm -hmm. um, to me it looked like that Jared Hurd is the real deal, which I already I already know he's the real deal. Right. But with him, with a great performance tonight or tomorrow night, he's he's going to uh, hold up to everything that's been following him around, which is the media. Yeah, no question about that. And, of course, with Jamal, Charles, and Tony Harrison, I know he's not looking toward that. That fight comes up next month. And uh, the two may win, may uh, fight each other for the uh, for unification. Yeah, I, you know, at the press conference yesterday, he's, he was saying that he really he did want Charlo to win the fight because he wants to fight him real bad. So right. he's already beating Harrison. Anyway. Yeah, he was already beating Harrison, and and that fight's going to bring going to uh, generate a lot of money. I think. All right, good enough. Now let's go over the card one more time. We got the entire card now. Everything's set, ready to roll. With uh, Jared Hurd taking on Julian Williams, 12 round bout for the IBF, WBO, WBA, and IBO Super Welterweight Championship. Uh, that'll be the main event on PBC. That'll be the telecast is on the way 8 p.m. Eastern Time. No question mm -hmm. about that. Co feature will be about 10 round in Super Lightweight Division. Mario El Azteca Barreros of San Antonio, Texas. He's a 23 0, 15 KOs, taking on Juan Jose El Pitbull Velasco from uh, Argentina. He's 21 12 KO. That should be in two fights as well. Matt Korobov out of Old Town, Russia, now fighting out of St. Petersburg, Florida. He'll take on Emmanuel, the chosen one, Aline, from East Meadow, New York, 159.6 pounds. And those are three bouts that you'll see live on PBC, on Fox and PBC at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Yeah, Aline, I, I want, I'm really excited to see Aline bout because he had some terrific bouts when he, you know, when he came back from that one loss he had. And um, he's been doing very well, and he's still with George Peterson, who's moving around. Had an opportunity to talk to Paul Williams, which we were happy to see. But uh, Aleem tomorrow is, is going to have a, a, a big assignment. And, and I, think, I think he's been in, in these type of bouts enough that it, he's capable of handling. Let me say also, the crowd here was in extremely enthusiastic. Huge crowd here in, this, in the room here where we had to weigh in. We also were joined by not only gentleman Jerry Cooney, who was here uh, helping out with the weight, weigh in. Also, Lennox Lewis was here, along with Paul Williams. And I must say that a good friend of mine, Th Sergeant Charles Mooney, he is will be in the corner of Matt Korobov on Saturday night. Yeah, that's that's good to see uh, Mr. Mooney out doing his thing. And actually, I, I'm I'm familiar with him because I've seen him on a, a few in a few uh, card uh, corners lately. Yeah. You know, working with some fighters. So I'm glad to see him right back into the mix with the boxing. And, and like tomorrow night, it's going to be an exciting night for everybody. Now, originally it was scheduled to have an FS1 telecast of some of the bouts on this card. That will not happen. Okay, so everything else. So you want to see everybody on this card, you got to be here at 5 o'clock in the evening. That's when we get on the way. Doors over at 5. We've just been told that the uh, first bout will be at 5.05. So be here at 5 o'clock. You got to see everybody. Now, you're on the card. Greg Sharpshooter Outlaw out of Bowie, Maryland. He's 7-0, two KOs. He'll take on Martin Nicholas Matamala of Argentina. He's 11-7, three KOs. And Greg Outlaw looks like he's ready to go. Yeah, Greg Outlaw, every time it comes to weigh-in time, he's very focused because 
this is the most this is the part that he doesn't like for, about boxing is the weigh in you know cutting the weight but I think everybody every fighter goes through that moment you know in that time but he's ready for this and he's happy to be on the card of this magnitude yeah you sit in front of us actually you look like he said just let this be over with that's what he has to look like yeah he's looking like he's just in tune ready to go eat get put this put his weight back on get back get some nutrition in his body bulk up to where he needs to be and get prepared for tomorrow and that's a swing bout on the card that'll either be for six or eight rounds Super middleweight bout scheduled for 10 rounds. Demond, the best side, Nicholson, the WBC, USNBC super middleweight champion, as well as the Maryland State super middleweight championship. Again, neither of those belts on the line. He's 21 3 and 1, 20 KOs. He'll take on Ernest Muzu of Ghana. He's 25 and 4 with 22 KOs. Yeah. Yeah, Nicholson, he's. He's excited to be where he is. You know, signed with Lou DiBella, they've been moving him the way he really wanted to be moved. And they're doing an excellent job. He tra changed trainers and things. You saw his boxing style change. You know, he's not a brawler now. He's more of a boxer. And he, and he works his power shots in with in between. So he's doing an out outstanding job. And tomorrow night, he's he going to have a, another task on his hand to, to, with his opponent. Now we have a matchup for the IBO Super Bantamweight Championship. It's Stephen Fulton Jr. out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's undefeated 15-0, 7 KOs. He'll challenge the champion, Paulus Abunda of Namibia at 27-2 with 11 KOs. Let's see. All right. Jamal Nicholson just passing us by here. And uh, that's been interesting about there. 12 rounds for the IBO Super Bantamweight Championship. And we're just doing the order of the card as it goes in today, <clears throat> tomorrow night. Lightweights, eight round bout, Devontae Speed Walls out of Glen Arden, Maryland, 11 1 and 1, eight KOs. He'll take on Jonathan Perez of Barranquilla, Colombia. He's 38 and 23, 30 KOs. And they got a little testy here to weigh in today. Yeah, with, uh, I don't know what that, what he, that heated moment was about, but. I like the way Javante Speed Rawls, I like the way his career is also moving. We know we saw him from the start of his career. We saw his development, you know, and he, he came and, and had that one loss that he suffered. Mm -hmm. And then also a draw that he thought he won the fight. But uh, he, he's moving in a way that he wants to be moving. And, 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 the, and the, the fights that he's taking are putting him in the direction he needs to be with those tough fights. Look at that. Big bout for Alexander Spartan Marina. We've just been told that it's an IBO Super feather, super super flyweight elimination bout. Richard mm -hmm. was told it was a championship bout, and I think it was announced as such. But in reality, it was not a championship. It's not a championship bout. We've been told. I was talking to uh, I think it's Hilton Whitaker. He's the IBO, IBO super supervisor. Yeah. Talking today, but Alexander Spartan Marine out of Bethesda, Maryland, Rockville, Maryland, by way of Yasu Morania. Um, he'll take on. He's 17 and 11 KOs. Taking on Luis Concepcion of Panama City, Panama. He's 37 and 7, 26 KOs. That about scheduled for 10 rounds. And uh, Marine, I saw him in the back. He looked very focused as well. Yeah, Marine, he's very focused. He was looking towards. He was looking forward for this bout to mm -hmm. come up. Uh, too bad it's not going to be a championship bout like they were yeah. called for. But um, it still puts him in the, the rankings with, with this IBO title. So, I mean, IBO eliminator. So, so uh, he, he, he's, he's still in the position to, to go move forward in the yeah. weight position. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, He's right where he needs to be, you know. And he's been. We saw him in some tough fights. Yeah. You know, we saw him in some tough fights. We saw locally he was in a tough fight, mm -hmm. and I think it was about. At, it was it at, at the Michaels. Uh, I think it was at the Michaels uh, yeah. station, mm -hmm. uh, playground. I think it was whatever it was. Yeah, but yeah, uh, Tyson's playground. Tyson's yeah. playground. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was in a tough Michael's fight. Son, Michael's, Mike, Michael's son. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it was a tough bout then, and I think he learned from that, and 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 that's why he's in the position he is in now. No question about that. Also, a couple four rounders. Aaron Anderson out of Baltimore. He's four and oh, three KOs. He'll battle Carlos Galindo of Lima, Peru. He's uh, one and nine. So uh, Aaron Anderson has a good shot to come back. And also Mark Sales Duncan out of Clarksburg, Maryland. He's three and one with three KOs coming off his only pro loss. He'll take on Kevin the Scarecrow, Womack, Baltimore, Maryland. Eight, 17 and four, six KOs. So that should be an interesting card. This card should be outstanding. Uh, I want to get some perspective real quick. I, I want to see, let's see if I can get him real quick. Hey, Thomas, can I talk to you a second? Can I a second? Mm -hmm. We're going to talk to a man who actually can give us some unique perspective because, one hand, he fought one of the biggest cars we've had in the area when he fought the uh, on the uh, on the Peterson Khan fight back in 2011, and now he is here as a manager for Demon Nicholson. Um, Demon Nicholson manager managing he's managing Demon Nicholson going into this fight t tomorrow night at the uh, Patriots at uh, the Eagle Bank Arena. That's Thomas Top Dog Williams Jr. Uh, talk about the difference between what you went through in um, 
in uh, 2011 what, what DeMond is going through now, to, going into tomorrow night? Man, in 2011, man, I was excited being on one of the biggest cars to come to D.C. in a long time. Lamont and Con, Lamont and Con, And the best thing about that was I was the last fight right before it went on TV. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like I fought in, on TV because it was so packed. Right. I fought right before Seth Mitchell. Seth Mitchell right. fought Abragamov. Yep. He was the first TV fight, man, and, and it was big for me. You know, I felt like it got a lot of people, got a lot of buzz around my name. And this is a tremendous card to be a part of. DeMar wanted to fight on the TV portion. I told him, just you being involved with the event mm -hmm. will be, will, will be, um, then with, with, with be a lot family, of yeah? be a lot of exposure. Yeah, my family, my yeah, babies. Don't worry you know. about it. Don't yeah, worry so about it would be a lot of exposure for him, man. So I'm hoping that this catapults DeMond career like it catapulted mine back in 2011. Mm -hmm. And I think that with the buzz this fight is going to get, I think it could put a lot of buzz around his name and kind of, you know, um, get people back talking about him and get him, you know, get that buzz back out there in the middleweight in the super middleweight division. This is exactly where you guys want him at with the type of fights you're putting him in right now. Tough fighters might not be as popular, but they're still tough fighters. And that's the that position you're trying to move him in? Yeah, man, this guy that we're fighting, Muzu, you know, he's not known. He has a lot of knockouts. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, his record, he has a good record. You know, I think he's, what, 22 and 4, 23 and 4? He is uh, 25 and 4. 25 and 4. Another, another good record. You know, um, we're trying to, my, my job as a manager is to sharpen DeMond up so when we put him back on that stage, we can be ready 110%. I believe when we fought um, Jesse Hart, I think it might have been a little too early. Mm -hmm. You know, like it might it might have been too early, you know. But now, I think that DeMond probably can deal with anybody in the super middleweight division at a top level. Mm -hmm. You know, he's looking sharp. And it's not just the opponents that I'm looking at. It's how he's mm -hmm. handling things in the ring, how he's moving these guys, how he's punching, how crispy his punch is looking. We went back and forth a guy by the name of Isaac Rodriguez yeah. last August. Mm -hmm. Strong guy. Mm -hmm. He swole DeMond's eye up, and I'm thinking about the third round. That had to do with a little adversity. Couldn't see out of one eye. You know, he, he really had to bite down because Ozzy Rodriguez was a game guy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people didn't know about him, and it was a good fight. Yep. Yep. It was a good it fight. He, he, he has improved because early in the year, he – Early in his career, he had a tough time with dealing with adversity, but now he got that kind of. Yeah, man. Early in his career, I got I got Demond in um, July, no January 2017. Mm -hmm. um, when I fought for the title, a lot of people don't know this. When I fought for the title, I'm the one that got Demond to fight on the card wow. with, the Don, with the Donna Stevenson card, yeah, yeah, and that yeah. was before I even managed him. Mm -hmm. You know, I told Al, like, man, listen, I came in the gym with this kid. Mm -hmm. I want to put him on the car. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he was going to fight Manny and Liam, though. Right, right. And, and, and they were like, and, and the first thing they said was, well, who is he going to fight? I said, I mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Next thing I know, DeMond called me about three weeks after the car. I said, I'm fighting on the car. I said, really, who are you fighting? He said, Manny and Liam. I said, oh, man. <laughs> I wanted you on the car, but I didn't want you to fight Manny and Liam. Right, right. You know, but at the same token. They both were trying to establish themselves, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I can't really. I didn't want either one of them to lose. Right. It was a draw. Right, let's say right. You, see? you know. <laughs> yeah. And the crazy thing about it is, my brother said I can guarantee it's going to be a draw. I said you oh. got to be the first person in history. <laughs> and, and 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 when it happened, mm -hmm. I said, man, why did you? Oh. Oh, and, and it was a draw. Mm -hmm. Tell, tell us about tell us about the, the demand you seen early in his career into the demand you see now. Man, the, the demand early in his career, he wasn't focused. I felt like. Uh, you have to be 100% focused, you know, when you're in this game. You know, in the ring, out of the ring, at home, on the weekends when your coach not watching, uh, when you're not talking to me. Now, I'm talking to DeMond six, seven times a day. If we're just talking about life, the kids, let's take the kids to the playground. or Let's do this. Let's go walk around the mall. You know, you know, just, just things to kind of keep them level-headed. And I really believe, like, the Jesse Hart fight kind of changes his mentality and the way he looks things. He said, man, Thomas, I got to give it 110%. Now, you know, I just took another loss. Can't lose no more. You know, next the next loss could be detrimental to his future. You know, so I've really seen the switch over. Man, and I'm excited, man. I'm excited about it. You know, I retired from boxing, and I couldn't walk away 100%. Now I got my love. Now I got my love. I'm smiling. Even though I want to be up on that stage, but I know that it's a time when boxers Gotta say, you know, that's enough. And, and I know, felt that within myself. And you know your position now, right? I do, mm -hmm. I do. You know, I'm still still talk good, <laughs> not walking around on my heels. Mm -hmm. I feel healthy. Mm -hmm. I feel good. You know, and that's the best thing about it. I came out on my own terms. Yeah. And and what is it that that sold the the, the product that Damon is now to Lou DeBella? 
Um, Lou was already looking at DeMond. I called Lou one day. You know, I called a couple guys, a couple people that I deal with. I deal with Lou in the past. And I like the way Lou moved moved his fighters or whatever, you know. And uh, he said, man, Thomas, I want to see the kid do good. You know, I want to see the kid go do good. And I want to get some DeMond with somebody who's genuinely wanting to move him. You know, um, even though we haven't fought on Lou DeBella's cards, you know, uh, recently, um, I've been doing my own networking and getting them on things. Like this this card that we're on now, I personally call Al Heyman myself. You know, I call Al. Like, Al, I need you, you know, get DeMond on this card, this and this and that. And he said, oh, Thomas, I'm going to make it happen for you. I called DeMond, man, I can hear the, I can hear the excitement in his voice and everything because he really wanted to be on this card. Any fighter that's fighting and they have a big car and they said he wanted to be on the car. Exactly. Yep. Everybody yep. wants yep. to be exactly. on the car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know car, ca cars like this make a difference. It does. Cars like this make a difference. As far as exposure, not just to hear the, the roar of the crowd, but just the, just the all around exposure. Like you said, your opportunity, you, you were in front of a big crowd, yes. more people, more important people of were course. there in their placed in their seats ready for the main event. Yeah. But you opened up and you showed a good performance and look at how your career Talk. Yes, man. Like, I, I, I remember exactly, like, I remember, I think it was like, I don't know, seven fight. I know Wale was there, Donovan, I'm Mag Donovan McNabb, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm in the ring, and mm -hmm. it's packed. I mean, packed, packed. And I'm looking around the ring, I'm focused, but I'm like, oh, man, they, they go so-and-so, they're going to so so-and-so. I'm like, oh, no, I got to turn up. <laughs> I got to turn up. I got to turn up. And then when I got out the ring, man, they, like, when I was walking back, like, people were, like, reaching over, like, grabbing my arm. Like for pitches, that just made me like want more of that. Cause I think you, your bout was, uh, I think is it uh, Fernando Guerrero? His bout was before yours, I think. I think you was after that. I was right before Seth Mitchell. Seth, right. It was Seth and then Lamont. I was right before. I was number nine. I yeah, think. Yeah, I think. I think uh, Fernando was Dusty going right in front of me. Yep. Anthony, uh -huh. right. Fernando, yep. Josh Davis. Yep. Mm -hmm. A lot of people fought before me. Yeah. And, and the crazy thing about that is I got to the venue early, like 5 o'clock, and I didn't fight until like 10 something. Yeah. Yeah. But it don't matter. Like, I was I so you happy did. to be on the card. Yeah. Man, this is a great. This is great for the sport of boxing. It's great for DC yeah. for them to bring high magnitude fights like this, man. Yeah, man. And it's gonna be a good fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jared was my roommate in the Golden Gloves. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. uh, Julian was on the team with me. Uh, 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 2009 uh, USA Boxing Nationals. Wow. We were on the East Central oh, team. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I got a relationship so got with both of them. Both, yeah. Got ties with both of them, man. I tell you what, and I don't want to seem like that. I, I, I'm always pulling for the home team guy. You know, I'm pulling for this. I don't be surprised if it's a draw, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but we need a winner, though. We need, Honestly, yeah. that's just me being in the middle. Champion, we need a win. Yeah. We need a winner, and we need a unified champion. Mm -hmm. yeah. We haven't had that in a long time. I would yeah. love to see Jerry grab that WBC belt. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would love to see that. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I would love to see one of, one of the people I came the up city. One of the people I came up with. Become the undisputed, and he bring another fight back here. And guess who gonna be on the undercard again? Got that right. Guess who gonna be on the undercard on, again? On television, <laughs> probably too. <laughs> on TV yep. this time. Definitely, you know? definitely. You know? We're gonna let you get back to your family, Thomas. Hey, thank, thank you so you, much for joining you, us. Hey, thank thank you. you for the perspective as well. Great yeah, perspective. Yeah, thank you. All right, so nine beltway boxers on this card coming up tomorrow from the Eagle Bank Arena on the campus of George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, we start at 5.05 p.m. Eastern Time with the preliminary bouts. 8 o'clock is when the PBC on Fox and, and the Fox Deportes card gets underway. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're even at the building. If not, <clears throat> make sure you join us. And Juan and I have both fight merely following the card. Any final words, Juan? Uh, Thomas Williams explained everything exactly to the T. Yeah. It, it was, everything was perfect. We needed a big card like this, a magnitude card. A, a card of this magnitude, you know, and and, and nothing greater than a, a unification. No question about it. No you know? question about it. So we look forward to seeing you there tomorrow night, Saturday, May 11th, from the Eagle Bank Arena in George, at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. We're getting on the way 5.05 Eastern Time from Fairfax. Until then, I'm Gary Digital Williams. Thanks for joining us, along with Juan Marshall. Thanks to Thomas Top Dog Williams Jr. for his perspective. And we'll see you tomorrow night from Fairfax, Virginia. Thanks for joining us. Always remember, keep supporting the best boxing in the world. The boxing along the beltway. Take care, everyone.